The ban list is right around the corner now that we are in December, and I want to do a bit of a generic discussion on it because I've already talked about what should be hit. That's already on the channel, but when could we see it, and are we actually going to see a lot of hits? Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the sexiest phone of the most, Avery LR32. You're in Destroy the Ever Living Boo Boo, staying off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1500 ladder. The reason why I say sexy phone is because I actually just upgraded from the iPhone 13 to the 16 Plus. So, one half of this video is going to be just me staring at the camera, staring at y'all, my beautiful face, and then the other half is going to be uh, commentary style. I've got some more COD footage where I'm working on headshots, so we're back on stakeout, and I'm getting absolutely obliterated. The headshot grind is real. Anyways, really appreciate all the love and support. Hope y'all having a fantastic day. I was looking at the OCG ban list uh, the other day, and one thing I love about the OCG ban list is that they give end dates. So consistently, the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth month of the year, Konami of Japan gives the OCG a ban list. Now, at first, I thought I was going to be able to make a correlation between when the OCG got theirs and when we got ours, but there's really nothing there. It's not really too random, but for the most part, it's random. And so I was looking at things that are on their ban list, and I started thinking, you know, could we see these hits come to the game on our end. And of course, there's things that they hit on their last ban list. Like they've had Cash Tira Fenrir banned. It would be interesting to see Fenrir be banned because that was something that people wanted for a while when it first came out. Um, but then of course, they've got Engraver at one, Tracked at one, Lacrima, I believe is also banned there. I could be wrong. And then obviously Beatrice is banned. And so there were some other things like, you know, Black Witch going to one, Bonfire going from two to one. And so now that we're in December, um, most likely we are going to get a ban list around the end of December, if not January 1st of next year. Uh, last year, this time last year, actually, when we got a ban list, it was December 19th, and then it went into effect January 1st of 2025. So we started off, or January 1st of 2024. So we started off this current year with a new ban list. And I really hope that Konami makes that a habit and does that year in and year out from now on because that's really a nice way to set up the new year for Yu-Gi-Oh! on a good pace, especially because we're getting Supreme Darkness and I believe mid-January, I could be wrong about that, but that will set up very nicely for YCS Orlando, which is at the beginning of February. And on top of that, I think Crossover Breakers just dropped, which if you're investing in that set, I don't know why, because the only good things in there are Malice and Rizal. And Rise Hall is a small world deck, unfortunately, until we get the seventh Ascension and Tachyon cards in March. I accidentally said February for Maze of the Master before, but it's March. Um, and so the, the deck's not going to be as consistent, assuming that like they don't preemptively hit things like small world to one. But something I've seen the community talking about recently is bringing things like Hall by the Grave back to three. And honestly, after what we saw at YCS Bologna, and there's actually another YCS this weekend too, YCS Anaheim, which that's just going to be a bloodbath, which I think that that's, we're going to get a balance after the fact, but we'll talk about that in a second. I do think that hand traps need to at least be hit to one in some form or fashion. I thought a few years ago there was a balance where Ash went from three to one or something in the OCG and then went back to three. Um, correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I thought that that was a thing a few years ago. But... I really firmly believe that hand traps, at least in the TCG, have gotten to a point where they're just so out of hand. And yes, you can make the argument that once Rizal and all that is here, which is basically here already, we're going to see a decrease in hand traps because Rizal is uh, very resilient against hand traps. Like Ghost Ogre is something that's pretty good against it. Um, and then if you hand trap something on their field, then that can trigger the detonator where they can pop a card on your field, assuming you've got something. But besides all that, I really don't know if we're going to see a decrease in the hand traps here in the TCG, like in the OCG, because the OCG right now, they're playing like 11, maybe 15 hand traps, if that, if you look at like the top decks over there um, on like Road of the King and Yu-Gi-Oh! Meta, things like that. They're not playing a lot of hand traps. On average, I would really argue that they're playing mostly just 11. Like they're playing the two max C, maybe some old charmies, and that's it. Because they're not really all that great against Rizal. At the same time, though, I feel like at least the TCG player base were so tired of just being bombarded with hand traps. Like people were already sick of hand traps here. 
But then once we got the Mulch Armies and we're also getting a third Mulch Army, basically Max C3, in Supreme Darkness, granted it's not as good as Perulia or Fualos, but I feel that that really pushed people over the edge of just hand traps being absolutely out of control. Like you look at packs list, and we talked about this a few days ago, and uh, actually I'm looking at right now on November 25th, where that video has almost 2,000 views now, where I talked about how YCS Bologna proved that hand traps need to be banned, although that was more for the title, and then of course people got all butthurt about it. I think I actually want hand traps banned, but then they didn't watch the whole video. I digress. <laughs> but hand traps really do need to be hit. Um, Pax list had six mulch armies in the side with like 22 hand traps, 23 hand traps in the main. Oh, I, if I never saw another hand trap in my life, I would be happy. The problem with that though is what people argued on my video is like then decks like Dark World FTK just become like tier zero. Like if you put like all the hand traps to one and like you ban Shifter and like just say ban Drone Lockbird, Dark World FTK becomes really good. Like being able to loop your whole hand to five is crazy. And so it's it's a really tough spot to be in and I get it. But with how the OCG meta is currently designed compared to what we have, I don't think that Rizal and Malice are really going to change how many hand traps that people play. I mean, the, the way that you can build cash tier of Fiendsmith with what Fiendsmith is currently at pending any ban list, I think that being able to play so many hand traps and just basically obliterate them out of the game is just crazy. Um, and then if they do summon twice from the extra deck, you just summon a dead hand trap out of your hand and make a sky crisis. Like that's, that's really good. Uh, I mean, you know, barring any sort of negation that the rise all player may have, that's insane. So I don't know, we could see an increase in things like dark room and more droplets, things like that. But I, I think it's just really hard to tell right now. And I think just more than anything to help appease the player base, I think we really need to see some kind of hit to hand traps, especially just banning Shifter, because Shifter is just a god card. We all know that at this point. I would argue it's Mystic Mind 2.0 almost. <laughs> so now when it comes to an actual date on the ban list, we mentioned YCS Anaheim. I'm thinking that Konami is going to have YCS Anaheim take place. Sorry, I have my screen here on a timer, unless I'm already showing the gameplay, then it doesn't matter. But... Um, once YCS Anaheim happens, I think that Konami is going to take around a week or two to put the ban list together, unless they already like have a good idea, put it up, and then they'll go on vacation for the rest of the year. And then we start off January 1st, 2025 with a brand new ban list. We get Supreme Darkness a little bit after that. Then we roll into February with going to the YCS in Orlando, which is basically in my backyard. <laughs> like, it's, it's going to be really good at that point. Especially, too, if they wait till after Anaheim, right? Crossover Breakers is legal. We get Malice and Rise all the whole thing. They can preemptively hit things like Rise all and Malice going into January and then getting Supreme Darkness. And this is really a big point that I want to mention in this video. Konami could do like what they did with Infinite Forbidden with Fiendsmith and how they banned Lacrima very preemptively and early on as a hit to Fiendsmith. They could do the same thing to Rise All and Malice, whether that's banning Shifter for Malice because they can play under Shifter even though they're a Cypress deck. They could uh, put Bonfire to one. They could put Small World to one. Um, they could, I guess, ban Pot of Prosperity because I guess Rise All can kind of play it. They can hit Hand Traps. They can do whatever it is that they want to do to preemptively hit Rise All before it really starts steamrolling out of control to where out of the gate, the deck becomes more fair, or I guess fair-ish, for lack of a better term. Um, and you have to keep in mind, too, it's basically like Tempai, where instead of it being a going second deck, it's a going first deck, but it's very easy to play. Like, once you learn the lines, the deck is very mid-range. The only reason why I don't know any of the lines is because I haven't given a shit to learn it, because the format's been dead for me. Like, I haven't had regionals in months. And so... I think that it's going to be a, a deck that a lot of people pick up, and it's also just really good. Like, it's the better you are with a mid range deck, the better of a player you are in the mirror, and thus, like, you're, you're going to succeed. You know, it's the same thing with Tempai. Tempai is kind of budget, I guess, depending on your build. Um, but the better you are with it, the better of a player overall you are, and then you can easily, more easily beat people in the mirror, and then just beat players in general because you're just very good with a going second mid range deck. So, hopefully sooner than later, they'll give us a list. I mean, ideally, the Monday after the weekend of YCS Anaheim, they give us a list. If not, I could see them doing what they did last year and giving it to us on, like, December 19th or December 18th, you know, 
I mean, last year they did it on the 19th. It'd be nice to have a repeat and drop it on the 19th. And then the rest of the month or play testing for the YCS in Orlando or any regionals that are going to be out uh, with Supreme Darkness, which as far as I know, Konami hasn't updated their list. I checked this morning and yesterday and it wasn't updated. But overall, I am cautiously optimistic for this new format. And I think that if they can do these preemptive hits to Malice and Rizal out of the gate, I think that that's really going to help the format as a whole. Because you have to keep in mind that Supreme Darkness isn't a metal warping set. The Primite cards, if anything, they help Blue Eyes. And I guess kind of Paleo, depending on your build. Even though I'm I'm not really a big fan of the Spiral Primite build anymore because it's a stun deck. But outside of being able to play the six Dominus traps, it doesn't really do all that much. It's kind of booty booty butt cheeks. And plus, if they like ban skill drain and stuff, then the deck just gets worse because it's basically just a Floodgate stun deck. But guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Again, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm thinking that like mid to late December, we're going to get a list. I don't think Konami's going to wait till after Supreme Darkness. There's no fucking way. I think that they know that the format is liquid ass with big old chunks inside. I don't think they're going to wait longer than they need to. Plus, they gave us a list at the end of August. So, like, we've already been in this format for basically four months at this point. Like, January 1st would be, like, I would argue four months. So, guys, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you prefer, gameplay or my beautiful face on the camera. Let me know what you think of the iPhone camera. I think I'm, I'm looking pretty good. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.